You know, if you work in manufacturing, you've probably seen this in almost every drawing you can imagine. That is, break all sharp edges. And if you're deburring or breaking sharp edges, this is the tool of your trade. It operates by hand, and historically, there's really been no way to automate this. But I'm with Dan Merritt. He's Material Removal Product Manager for ATI Industrial Automation. Dan, you've got a way to automate this. That's right. We're really excited about this product because what we're doing is we're taking this most commonly used deburring tool, as you mentioned, and now we're finding a way to make it viable in robotic applications. So, you held this up as, a, as an example. What we're going to do is take this existing tool right out of this hand tool, and we're going to put it right into our new tool designed for robotics and automation. So, what this product does, as with all of ATI's compliant deburring tools, we have a range of motion. We have this compliance built into the tool to compensate for variabilities in the process so that if my parting lines or flash are inconsistent, now we have that range of motion to compensate. We can control the force pneumatically. We can bear down harder on the part. We can take off less material if we have to, all simply by adjusting the air pressure. So this makes a commonly used manual process really viable in automation. Yeah, Dan, one of the reasons why manual deburring has been so sticky, why it's lasted so long in automation, is because you have the feel of a human operator to know how hard to press, how hard to drag it across the, the surface you're trying to deburr. And uh, in automation process, historically, we've gone to rotary deburring. It's been a it's been a rotary burr, a carbide burr, abrasive loaded, uh, you know, Scotch Bright. We've all kinds of alternate technologies. This seems almost like going back to the days of a craftsman. That's right. Well, what's that old saying? If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So what we're trying to do is if we have a process that's successful, we have a tool that's successful in a manual operation, why do we have to then change what we're doing? There's a reason why that tool is being used. It's producing the best and most consistent results even in a manual operation. So let's take what's positive and what's working in that application and actually use it to our advantage when we go to automate. So that way we're changing up fewer variables and we can stick with what's working. We just make this tool viable for a robot. Now those blades, are, are they proprietary? Do I have to order them specially? Or is that literally the tool that I'm getting from my industrial supply now? These are the exact same blades. So when we took it out of that hand tool and we put it in here, this is not an ATI product. So this is industry standard. You buy it from your current supplier. You can expect the same kind of wear, the same kind of use out of your existing tooling. So Dan, for people who'd like to see this demonstrated live, I understand you have an upcoming expo. That's right. On May 9th, 2019, we're having an automation expo at our headquarters in Apex, North Carolina. That's just outside of Raleigh, just 20 minutes from the airport. We're going to be showcasing multiple technologies and have a live deburring demonstration showcasing this tool. Classic manual deburring, now automated, says Dan Merritt of ATI Industrial Automation.